Hi, it's Mike Mikowski, and uh, we're going to talk about something a little different today. Instead of going through a particular model build, I've had a number of people ask about uh, spacecraft thermal treatments. Uh, many of you may know I'm a retired spacecraft engineer, worked on a number of programs at Orbital ATK, which is uh, now part of Northrop Grumman. And uh, our company built a number of satellites for NASA. And um, we, those programs, of course, you know, involve all the different materials you'd use on, on a spacecraft. So I've got some firsthand experience on this and I thought I'd share that with you. Um, what thermal treatments are is basically in space, you've got no air. So it makes it more difficult to keep things at the right temperature. Think of, think of a satellite or a spacecraft or a, a crewed vehicle as a, a box of electronics and you've got to keep those electronics at the right temperature so they don't get too hot or too cold. Here on the earth we have an atmosphere so you can use air typically to you know blow cooler air over over an uh, electronic so it doesn't overheat. That's why you have fans in your computers and other electronic equipment so it doesn't get too hot. When there's no air you can't do that. So you have to do heat transfer by conduction through uh, maybe a base plate or the base of metal that the electronic device is mounted on and have a path to the outside of the spacecraft where the excess heat can escape. And then on the other hand, you have conditions, say, in orbit when you're on the dark side of your planet in what they call eclipse or over the night side of the, the, sat, the, the excuse me, the night side of the planet it's cold, there's no sun, so now it's too cold. So you don't want the heat to escape. So you use a combination of blankets to keep the heat in and various coatings to let the heat escape efficiently. And those coatings and blankets have different thermal properties. I won't get into a lot of detail here because we're more interested in how do we make it look right on a model. But I thought I'd give a little background on it because I happen to have some samples of some of these materials. There's some good references online. There's a great free download of a PDF of something called the um, Thermal Control Handbook, which has been uh, authored by a number of NASA and Air Force uh, experts. It's got some great info. It's rather technical, but it, it gives you the background of uh, a lot of the things I'm talking about. Um, I'll post that here. Uh, for Apollo programs, Paul Feld, a uh, historian who worked at uh, Grumman, uh, has posted a very nice uh, website on the lunar module colors. Got a lot of that material reproduced in my Space in Miniature book on the lunar module. But he still has a website where you can get more information and color uh, versions of how he interprets the different uh, materials on the lunar module. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. So basically, um, the treatments you're talking about on actual spacecraft can be things like paint. For example, white paint uh, will, will uh, reflect or emit uh, heat quite efficiently. A black paint will absorb heat. Um, for areas where you wanna get rid of the heat, in other words, use a high, what they call emissivity, material that could be like a shiny aluminized or metallized surface like a gloss chrome type finish it's typically just a uh, aluminized tape is frequently used sometimes they even use a uh, mirror type materials that have high emissivity which is used in places where you want to get rid of the heat um, when you want to keep the heat in they use what they call multi-layered blankets and these are um, just as they sound, you have multiple layers of thin metalized or metal coated plastic materials. And I'll show some samples of those in a bit. And as modelers, we just need to replicate the outside layer because that's all you're gonna see. Uh, but those are some of the techniques that are used. So from a modeler's perspective, what are we talking about here? Well, here's some examples and, and some common, common projects. Um, You've got the, uh, a Gemini spacecraft, and actually you've got thermal control materials here. The black um, metallic shingles 
are to control temperatures during re-entry. They don't see the heat shield high temperatures, but they still get hot. And so they're, they have treatments and material used to uh, control the temperature of the spacecraft. You've got the white radiator on the equipment section to try to reject heat because that's where all the uh, equipment is that's maybe getting warm. And what they found was that it was rejecting too much heat. So on the early missions, they put black tape stripes to modulate that emissivity somewhat. And um, that's replicated here with just decal stripes on the model. And again, that's just white paint. On the back, there's uh, a Kapton thermal blanket. We'll talk about Kapton in a bit. It's basically an orange plastic kind of material. And uh, there's various shades of gold colored foil. It looks gold, but it's not. Uh, but this colored foil can be used efficiently for, or effectively for simulating that on a model. Similarly on Apollo, um, you've got a combination of coatings. Um, the uh, service module of the um, Apollo main ship was just painted aluminum. There's white areas which were painted to radiate heat. So those are the white radiator panels you see here. Uh, actually, some of these raised lines are simulating coolant lines where they, they um, routed coolant from the electronics to this exterior surface where the heat could be rejected. Uh, the ship itself, the capsule itself, is covered with um, aluminized mylar tape, uh, a shiny reflective surface to um, uh, keep it from getting too hot. The lunar module itself has a combination of different types of materials. Um, the ascent stage is a combination of um, coated mylar to um, reject the heat in certain areas. The black areas modulate that by absorbing heat. And, and this was done via testing and analysis. Most of the descent stage is a combination of black and um, black coated Kapton and the, the aluminized Kapton, which is the orangey gold color. And we'll get into how we simulate this later. So you, you have these uh, surface finishes on Apollo and, and additionally on more modern uh, space shuttle type missions, you've got satellites again with Kapton blankets on some areas. You've got solar cells, typically the back of solar panels is painted white because the, the cells warm up and you want the heat to be rejected so the bottom is typically white. Um, the payload bay, uh, I don't have any satellites in here, but you can see some of the uh, elements of the uh, servicing mission in the back of the payload bay is uh, with, covered with a white cloth-like material called beta cloth, and we'll get into that in a bit. So you can simulate that by just painting aluminum foil with flat white paint. And of course, the shuttle gets rid of most of its heat with these radiator panels, uh, which are covered with a uh, aluminized foil type material. Again, high emissivity, shiny metallic, gets rid of that heat. Uh, I won't go into the tiles because that's kind of a different story from what we're talking about today. But you can see there's many different types of materials used on spacecraft and uh, they will show up in your models. Next, let's take a look at some actual uh, samples of materials that are used on, on satellites. Uh, these are actual uh, samples I got from the uh, blanket shop at, uh, at the time was, gosh, we were part of a lot of different companies, uh, originally Spectrum Astro, then General Dynamics, then Orbital, and then they merged with ATK, and finally got bought out by Northrop Grumman. But these are from actual um, spacecraft like uh, GLAST, Landsat 8 and 9, um, SWIFT, some of the NASA science missions I worked on. So let's take a look. So what we've got here is a multi-layer blanket and the outer layer is, I've got it labeled two mils of Kapton. So you've got um, basically Kapton, which is this orange color and it's um, got an aluminum coating on the back. And there's, I don't know, a dozen or so layers here. And um, there's a scrim, this um, woven type scrim separates these thin layers 
that make up the blanket. And you can see each of these metallic layers here has holes in it. And the idea is, you know, when you're launching from, from the earth into space, this is full of air and the air has got to get out. And so the holes help get the air out of here so it doesn't balloon up. The air has to escape when you go into a vacuum. And this scrim material keeps these layers from touching. The idea is you don't want heat transfer from one end to the other. This is on the outside typically. And you've got an inner layer. And again, you can see perforations on the um, inner layer. And that's to let the air out as much as possible. But you don't want these directly touching each other because you want an insulation. You don't want a thermal path from the inside to the outside. So the layers make uh, radiated heat hard to get through and it makes conducted heat hard to get through because they're not really in contact. These thin uh, scrims are sufficient to keep them separated. And the outer layers is capped on with aluminum on one side. The inner layers are typically mylar and it's very thin, very fine layers. And it's aluminized typically on both sides. And um, so that's one version of this blanket. Another version that came along a little later uses the same type of materials, but instead of the scrim, they basically put a um, pattern into the uh, mylar itself, uh, making it sort of a, a waffle type texture to it so that it doesn't have direct contact. It'll touch a little bit, but it works actually better than, than having that extra layer of the scrim in there. And it, uh, it's hard to tell with the uh, waffle pattern, but uh, you can see, I think you can see here, that it is indeed perforated and uh, full holes and uh, many layers, usually a dozen layers of this. And then on the other side, there's a solid layer on both sides. So this is also a two mil blanket. Um, just for comparison, the thickness of the material is what affects the color. And that's why on the lunar module, you have some of these different shades. This is a three mil layer of Kapton. You can see it's heavier. It's, it's got a little bit more stiffness to it compared to, let's, let's use this one as an example, compared to this material. It's got um, some, some flexure, but you can see this is, it's hard to do on video, but it's definitely thicker. And you can also see a difference in the color. The thicker material is a darker shade. And um, hopefully this shows up. We'll try some different lighting angles. But the um, thicker material is darker. And that's why you have different shades of this color on the lunar module. And you'll see it different colors on satellites depending on the thickness of the mylar. And to point out another factor with this, it, that it's the uh, mylar that's giving it the color. I went and tried to remove some of the coating on some samples. Here is um, some of the two mil, or I've basically, I don't have the right chemicals, but I scraped off some of the um, aluminized coating and you can see that it's the uh, mylar showing through. Here's the, um, the mylar layer and you know, if you remove some of the coating, you can see that it's, the aluminum is what's causing the color. Um, I looked at a piece of the uh, back of one of the perforated layers, expecting it to be clear, but upon scraping off some of the coating, it's a thinner layer of mylar, because you can see it's orange underneath, but it's aluminized on both sides. Kind of hard to see, but you can see they're the orange. And so this is actually Kapton. So Kapton is orange. The inner layer, I scraped off some. And if we can see that, you can see going through it, it's actually clear. Um, Kapton, I'm sorry, Mylar is a clear plastic. 
and uh, capped on is an orange plastic. So if this is aluminized on both sides and you remove the coating, you will get a clear material. It was kind of hard to remove anything here because it's uh, so fragile. But uh, the idea is to point out the actual colors of the underlying material. Another material that's commonly used is called beta cloth. Beta cloth is a uh, uh, fine woven silica fiber, kind of like fiberglass, but it's, uh, a, it's actually a cloth, but it's sort of a plastic cloth. Typically has a capped on coating and it's very durable. Um, it's got um, medium emissivity. It's a white color. It's kind of a flat white color. It's got some texture to it. Of course, on the model, you won't see it. And this was a sample, I guess it didn't fit, or was a test piece that went on one of the instruments on the glass gamma ray observatory. And here is a picture of uh, some of the instruments, these round uh, devices were uh, sodium iodide crystal detectors, and they were looking for gamma ray bursts. And uh, this is a blanket that would wrap around that. And when we look at the back side, you see it's, it is indeed a blanket. Here the outer layer is uh, beta cloth. Meanwhile, inside you have a multi-layer blanket of capped on layers, and again, it's perforated, so it can uh, let the air out. These wires are to um, drain any static charge that builds up, and they uh, are attached to grounding points in the spacecraft through these wires. And there's actually, um, they're attached to the spacecraft. This is um, Velcro type straps that are actually sewn on here, and it's all hemmed and uh, sewn in a blanket shot. And you can see the edges here are taped down with Kapton tape. Kapton tape is handy, and if you can get a hold of this as a modeler, it's useful for a lot of things on building your, your models where you're using this material, and on other stuff as well. This is handy like for taping down lunar module landing gear um, blankets. But anyway, so here is a sample of um, beta cloth. Uh, going back in time a little bit, uh, when I started my career, I was a co-op student working at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and I was there when Skylab was launched. And if you recall, they had a heating problem. Their micrometeoroid and thermal blanket got ripped off during launch, and they had a uh, paracel-type blanket that they used to um, control the temperature. They deployed that through an airlock. Uh, I was walking through a hallway in one of the buildings and I saw a big chunk of that foil hanging in somebody's office and talked the fellow out of a sample, told him I was building a model. So my Skylab model has a same piece of the um, um, type of material that was actually used. And, and here it is. And you can see this is actual gold-coated, I believe it's Kapton. It's almost translucent. You can kind of see through it. If we, uh, I might try aiming towards the window. So stand by, let's give that a try. So here's a piece of that Skylab blanket and you can actually see through it. It's very thin. You can see my fingers behind the blanket material here. It's, um, it's that thin. Some of it's kind of stuck to this piece of waxy paper, but you can see it's um, very thin, just a thin layer of gold on it and uh, sufficient to provide the correct thermal properties. Here's another example, a little bit different. This is Soyuz green. This is a um, actual sample of um, what the Russians use. Again, multi-layer, it's sort of a uh, beta cloth type material, but it's a, it's a green outer layer. And again, multi-layer insulation, very fine with a um, whitish beta cloth on the inside. Uh, the layers are perforated. There doesn't appear to be a scrim, but they're sort of textured. This is from a buddy of mine in Germany I got some years ago. Uh, we'll compare it to some color swatches from the federal standard. You, you decide which is close. The uh, 24108 is a reasonably close color. Um, you tell me. You could go with a lot of different colors. You may want to blend it. 
but um, I happened across this. They don't use this anymore. This was discontinued some time back, but um, it's another material that, uh, again, I replicate by just painting um, foil with a flat green color to suit my needs. Again, sometimes you might want to consider scaling down the color. This is rather dark, but it's been used uh, early in the uh, program. Now, what's interesting to do is to compare these colors. This is a gold blanket, and, and here is your Kapton. And clearly, you can see the difference in colors between a uh, Kapton blanket and a gold blanket. And it's a little better here. Um, the idea is that a lot of times people will say, oh, it's gold blanket. No, it's not. It's Kapton. Kapton and gold are clearly different colors, as you can see uh, in this um, video here, hopefully. But um, this is gold, and that's Kapton. And... Um, you get the darker cap done. And it's another color indeed. Now, the question is, how do we match this to our models? So what can modelers use to replicate these colors? Most people use a uh, foil from an outfit called Candylands. You can go look it up on the internet. It's pretty common. Uh, for uh, doing things like a lunar module. I don't think the match is that exact. Uh, most of the lunar module kept on was either 2 mil or 5 mil. I do not have any 5 mil. I don't think that's used much anymore, it's just too thick. Uh, here's the 3 mil. You know, it's starting to get close to this dark orange color. You know, if you're going to be uh, close, it's not too bad. It's not exact. Let me get a little, a little closer color here. Um, it, it's sort of an artistic thing. How close do you think we need to get? It's similar. Um, that's. I think it comes out. This comes out a little too dark. But um, these other ones are just too yellow. Even for the uh, two mil, it matches gold fairly well. There's another color here that's way too yellow. It even seems to have a little green in it. I don't care for that one too much. There's this intermediate, which isn't bad for gold. I use this for the um, Gemini for the most part, because it, it looks that shade. Um, I don't have the exact specs on that handy, but it matches the photos, so close enough. So, um, heck, some, it's not practical to use the actual cap down on models because it doesn't scale. You want a little little wrinkles in it, and this is too stiff. Even the two mil is too stiff. So you're best going with the candy lands type approach. Um, other options include things you collect over time, like here's some uh, gold foil, this gold coated foil. I don't know, it's not real gold, but it's like from a flower arrangement. Sometimes the, the pots are wrapped in a gold material. It's um, kind of an intermediate color. It might work for some applications. And you can find other candies that have different shades of gold colored uh, wrapping with them. Uh, there's also some craft paper that you can get at places like Michael's. Uh, origami paper and it's like it's white it's actual paper on the back but it's got a metallic sheen to it so it's actually got some kind of a foil bonded to paper so so those are options and uh, these are um, here's a something Glenn Johnson sent me once a long time ago uh, here's something he called a glitter wrap it looks like mylar that's gold coated or cap it's, it's clear it's very, you can see through it, and it's very uh, translucent, and that might match some of your Kapton. It looks very much like that Kapton color, so maybe it is Kapton. Who knows? Um, so there's a lots of options. Basically, do what you have handy. Do, use what is uh, going to match your, your colors and your paint references, and um, it's just a model, so, you know, you don't have to get too 
too carried away with it. There's other materials I found for some of the white stuff. Like I say, the beta cloth, I just paint aluminum foil white and it uh, works out pretty well, just household foil. Um, let's see, I've got, um, go find another piece of sample for you. For a while, I was getting my uh, mail order prescriptions in a white plastic mailer. And uh, here's here's a sample of that. It's uh, It's sort of thick, it doesn't, crease like foil and it's got this kind of grayish plastic on the inside but it's a nice flat white on the outside and this makes a nice uh, simulated beta cloth at certain scales uh, it's flexible it's not quite paper it's not quite foil it's not quite some some kind of plastic but if you can you know access something like this you know, typical household materials that's handy for uh sources for some of these uh, simulated uh, blankets. And how do you attach this to your model? Uh, good old micro scale foil adhesive. You paint that on, let it set up a few minutes and it's just very sticky. Often I'll put it on both surfaces or at least around the edges and uh, carefully uh, bond your materials on as needed. Sometimes you could use uh, cyoacrylic, acrylic, cyoacrylate paint, you know what I'm talking about, glue, CA. This stuff, this will work uh, as well. Cyoacrylate. It's been a long day. So that's another uh, material or adhesive you can use to spot attach uh, these blankets. So I hope that was helpful and not too confusing. It's just some of the stuff that I've picked up over the years. Uh, again, just because I've got access to some of this aerospace material, I don't use it on my models, but it's a nice to have as a color reference. And I wanted to kind of share that with you and share some of my experience building space models and um, what it actually compares to for the real thing. So hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email or check out my website at spaceandminiature.com and go out there and build a model. Have fun. Thanks.